Hi guys, welcome back. I hope you're all having a wonderful week. So I was going to do more content this week, but it's just been super, super busy. My husband and I, as you know, have just started kayaking. We've got camping trips coming up and we've been doing lots of outdoor activities because it's the UK. When it's not raining, you've got to get outside and you've got to enjoy a little bit of nature. So we've been out and about. I've been working on my studies as well. So I'm only giving you one video this week. I'd rather be honest about it unless something wonderful, miraculous happens just because I am short of time. But as I said last week, I thought you guys might enjoy the hunt. Now, this is all to do with the connections that Megan got and how she went from zero to 100, i.e. basically a D-list cable TV actress that was unknown. I don't care what people say unless you were a follower of Suits. No one was really a fan club of the hot girl in the Ashton Kutcher film, or the barmaid that Russell Brand kissed in Get Me to the Greek. These are not all prominent roles. I vaguely remembered her being in Fringe. They were the episodes I didn't like. I didn't know at the time that that was actually Megan. But this is all to do with clever connections, social climbing. Now, when it comes to social climbing, I don't believe that there's anything wrong in it. Why should people spend the rest of their lives going, oh, I was born working class. I have to be working class for the rest of my life. I can only mix with certain people. People. That is snobbery. There is nothing wrong with trying to change your life to give yourself and your children, your grandchildren a better lifestyle. Some people go from working class families and they end up in upper class families through hard work. Some people through lottery wins, whatever. But there is nothing wrong with it. Where there is a difference is when people use other people to get themselves their foot up on the ladder. They have got no intentions of retaining that friendship, that relationship, that business partnership. They are using people to be a stepping stone. That's when social climbing can become very, very ugly and not a nice trait or a thing to be doing to people. Now I can say the same with gold digging. Yes, gold digging sounds like an awful thing. A, a, a young man or a young woman, yes, men do it too to women, you know, they're after someone's money. But what happens when it's a mutually beneficial relationship, sometimes even a marriage, an older man marries a young, beautiful woman. She does it because she wants the lifestyle and she gets a wonderful way of life. He gets a pretty little thing on his arm and vice versa. But you get what I'm saying? But again, gold digging can then turn very, very nasty when this person is deliberately using someone with full intentions of taking everything that they have, using them, abusing them, hurting them, stealing from them. Now, I'm not saying that Megan is any one of these, but you're going to have to hear this one out called The Hunt and tell me what you think in the comments once I'm done with rehashing some of this information. And I'm aware that there are so many of you that have been following this from the beginning. Now, Megan's jump from being a, you know, a cable TV actress working in Toronto in Canada to then suddenly becoming a royal bride. Well, her dips in and out of visiting the UK where she just happened to meet Harry by chance chance all seem to revolve around actually suits and the end of seasons and renewal issues. Anytime a new TV series comes up, you've got no guarantee it's going to be renewed for another season. I've had favourite TV shows that I love and then they go poof, nope, and you're like, but no, it was really popular. Now, Megan's first dip into coming to the UK happened, as far as I'm aware and the information that I've got, in 2013. Now, Megan had met her first husband, Trevor Ingleson, who is now happily married to a beautiful wife, Tracy Curland, or now Tracy Ingleson, and they have two beautiful young children. Congratulations, and he, I think he dodged a bullet there. They started dating in 2004, and she agreed to marry him if Suits got renewed <laughs> for season two. Now, Suits is a job that she managed to get through Trevor's connections. I believe the same as, to be honest with you, the deal or no deal briefcase girl. Because Trevor worked in the industry, admittedly very low level, he was able to get her invited to certain events, meet people, eventually Megan started slowly finally getting her leg on the ladder. So when season two of Suits renewed, Megan finally let him put a ring on it and then subsequently decided <laughs> season three Toodles! She mailed back his rings in the post. She had decided at the end of season two she was going to move to Toronto. It was rumoured at the end of 2012 that she was having dalliances behind her husband's back. That's why she wasn't so keen on making the trip back from Toronto to where they were living in LA. And reportedly Trevor did try and save his marriage. He moved to New York. Megan still wasn't interested. She had got herself in with a new set, the Toronto Soho house set with Jessica Moroni. 
and I believe that Trevor certainly became surplus to requirements. Pretty cold after spending 11 years with someone. I mean, it's pretty harsh. And for him to just get his rings back through the post. Ouch. Now, in January 2013, Trevor had posted, <laughs> which adds insult to injury, I'm so proud of my wife. This was when the rumours of her having an affair with ice hockey star Del Zotto came out. He and his representatives have always denied this. But February 2013, they separated. Now, this is where 2013 becomes the magic year, the first year that Meghan decided to rock up to UK shores. Suits had dipped in ratings, and I'd imagine that the stars of the show get told, we well, didn't do as well, we were pulling in this number. So then they've got to think about, okay, maybe I should start looking for other acting roles, other jobs. Megan thought, great time to come to the UK. You had The Only Way is Essex, Made in Chelsea. Apparently Megan was sniffing around the thought of getting onto a UK reality TV show because they were so popular, people in America were hooked on the UK TV shows. Now, for her first event, she came to the Global Gift Gala and she was photographed with model Oliver Cheshire, who I believe married Pixie Lott, a UK singer. Now, there is no connection to these two. People have said that Meghan looked like she was pregnant. She wasn't pregnant. It was an unfortunate dress. I believe the dress looked very pretty at certain angles, but certain dresses, if you don't stand right and the light catches you at the wrong angle, all of us women know it. You can suddenly go, wow, I look pregnant. It's not a good look. But Oliver has said that he didn't know her. What these agencies do, these talent agencies, they put unknown people together, they make a debut on the carpet, and Megan looking beautiful with a hot, let's be fair, he was a good looking lad, you know, on the carpet trying to make waves. Didn't make any waves whatsoever. Nobody had a clue who she was. I don't think she made it into any of the tabloids, which she was desperate to do. Now, while she was on this red carpet, she got interviewed by Lizzie Cundy. I'm a massive Lizzie Cundy fan. I think she's really sweet. She was one of the first original footballers' wives. She got cheated on by her husband famously, and she has carved out a career. Yes, she's had lots of plastic surgery. She's open about it. She's looking great lately. I mean, she's had a few nip and tucks, and she's just looking great. She knows everyone on the party circuit. Lizzie Cundy is the woman that you want to know if you want to get into all of the parties. So Megan naturally was sucking up to her and was asking her about Ashley Cole. She was warned off because he is not only known for being a player for England, but also a serial cheating player. Now, she had also signed with UK publicist Neil Ramson. Now, he specialises in getting people onto reality TV shows in the UK. And he'd apparently pleaded with several tabloid reporters to interview her. No one was interested. So Kate Hind, who was then the show business editor of The Sunday People, after several phone calls pleading and then the offer of lots of free-flown Prosecco, finally gave in and said, fine, I'll take one for the team. Now she was told that she needed to go to Soho Sanctum, which is the Soho house chain in London. So this is where this interview had taken place. Megan dressed in white shirt. She was all flirty and girly and la di da di da letting the Prosecco flow. She was very charming and called in to Kate. But this is also where Megan let slip her little trick. Megan, can you cry on command? Oh yes, the directors love me because they're like, Megan, cry and I, one tear, left eye, go. And she does it. So when we saw Megan doing one tear, left eye, go at the Queen's funeral, not once but twice, and even pointing her black glove to it just so we made sure that the cameras could see it long range, it made a lot of us somewhat sceptical. Now, Kate also revealed in that interview that Megan had asked her as well, also about Ashley Cole. So it was quite clearly obvious that Megan had a, a separate target initially in 2013. There were rumours that she was literally going for anyone who had made their name in the newspapers. She liked the idea of being a wag. I think given the way Megan spends money, I think even the top footballers' wives would have been struggling to keep up with her. She needed something bigger. She needed someone better and just by a stroke of pure luck and a dumb prince, she managed to overachieve. But at this point, I don't believe Harry was her target. That came in later. Now, Ashley Cole embarrassingly said that Meghan wasn't his type and season four, luckily for Meghan, was renewed. There were clearly no bites for people that wanted Meghan in any of their reality TV shows. So she went back to Canada with her nice little Toronto set, photographed here with, guess who? Jessica Mulroney, her husband Ben Mulroney, who is the son of the former Canadian Prime Minister. 
And yes, that is Michael Bublé. I've never seen Megan with photos of Michael Bublé since. I think that is just one of the things with Soho House. There's lots of famous faces that dip in and dip out and you never know who you're gonna share a table with. There is also Lainey from Lainey Gossip sitting there. Lainey has denied that she has anything to do with Megan. She was only there at that particular dinner purely by chance. She never spoke to her before or since. However, Lainey has been photographed with Megan's mouthpiece who are quite clearly friends and that is Omid Scobie. So I'm not quite sure whether to believe Lainey, whether she's telling the truth, just for the simple fact she's always been incredibly positive about Meghan ever since she married into the royal family and incredibly mean about Catherine, Princess of Wales. Now Soho House, I've always said this, they, I believe that they allow people, if you're selected to join, to network, to mingle, and Lord knows whatever else that they get up to in privacy. Megan seemed completely happy hobnobbing at all of these parties and dinners with Jessica, who gave her access to people like Sophie Trudeau, and in turn with the Canadian Prime Minister as well, Justin Trudeau, and we all know who he is on friendly terms with. I'd say that Megan, in with this set, she was part of the Toronto popular set. Lots of parties, lots of holidays. Now, round about this time, this is where Megan decided she was going to become an influencer. She started up the lifestyle blog, The Tig. And in one particular interview, she decided to interview this very handsome up and coming chef who happened to be Corey Vitello. And of course, they started dating. Corey was into dogs, Megan adopts rescue dogs, Corey being a chef. Megan starts restyling herself as a food lover and a foodie. There you go, the Tig influencer was then born. But notice there were no charitable causes, no humanitarian efforts. There was nothing to do with the environment, civil rights campaigning. What about Black History Month? female empowerment, feminism. Here's a good feminism one for you. Touch my butt and buy me pizza. That is a win for feminists all around the world. There was lots of photographs of Megan drinking fine wine in fine restaurants, luxury travel, makeup, clothes, what to buy, what to drink, where to be seen. And it's all incredibly vapid, self-centered stuff, which if the latest reports are true, Megan seems to be going back to her home turf. As I've referred to it several times, Meghan has come full circle. Now, 2014, this is where the fun really starts. 2014 is where she met Misha Nunu. Now, Misha happens to be married to Alexander Jilks. Now, Alexander, he is friends with Prince William, with Prince Harry. He's friends with Princess Eugenie, Fergie, Beatrice and the Middletons. Alexander is in the royal circle set and by obviously marriage, so was Misha Nunu. They lived in New York at the time and they were high society New York, as well as so many contacts in the UK. Marcus Anderson managed to sit Megan right next to Misha Nunu at the Art Basel Soho house party, beach party in Miami. And they became best friends. You started seeing Megan going on holiday in these luxury stays with not Jessica anymore, Misha. Misha Nunu appeared in all of the pictures. It's like Megan cut out Jessica and then stuck <laughs> Misha on top. And obviously there was someone very familiar in all of these photographs, Marcus Anderson. Marcus Anderson comes up quite a lot. That's because he is incredibly well connected himself. Now let's move on to convenient friendship <laughs> number two, three, four or five. Let's go for Serena. Serena reportedly met Megan in 2010 and completely ignored her because Megan was a nobody. Megan got really excited seeing her. It was a non-story. It was just a chance for Megan to say, I saw Serena Williams. Come 2014, well, that is when there was a celebrity beach bowl in February. Megan was seen in some embarrassing pictures, flinging herself at Michael B. Jordan, who like Harry, when she tried to kiss him in that video, the body language was given a different story. But they played the sports game together. Megan wrote about it and spoke about it in her podcast about how Serena just started walking across to her. She wondered, the world stopped. She wondered who this wonderful person that Serena could be walking towards. Blah. And it was me. <laughs> and you're just... Honestly, I, I couldn't go back to listening to that podcast if you paid me. Thank you, Spotify, for cancelling it. So anyway, Megan had met Serena then and they became such good best friends that when Serena won the US Opens, 
look who popped up, just arrived at the back with two cameras, the cameraman, just to catch the moment where she saw her friend and gave her a big old hug. Not long after that, Megan, looking a little bit worse for wear, was also photographed hanging out with Serena at New York Fashion Week where Serena had clothing line out. Now ask yourself the question, if these two were such amazing good friends from this moment forward, why was Megan not invited to Serena's wedding in 2017 to Alexis? Why is it the next photographs we saw of Serena with Meghan was when she got invited to the royal wedding, but then again so did George and Amal Clooney, who admitted later that they did not know, nor had they ever met, Harry and Meghan. Serena and Amal Clooney also went to Meghan's star-studded baby celebrity shower, where rather than it being discreet, they had actually paid to have the front of the hotel cut off from pavements, so all of these stars could be seen coming in and out along with the expensive gift. I guess it was the added bonus of having one of the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory golden tickets to the royal wedding where real friends and family members of Harry and Meghan were actually not lucky enough to attend. So also in 2014 comes a very, very important friendship, even though it was her talent agent, but Meghan made sure that they became so much more than just clients and agent. They became real friends, real girl pals, another one that later got ditched. Now this is Gina Newthorpe Cowan from Kruger Cowan Talent Agency. She was introduced to Meghan by an unknown client, I'm guessing through Soho House, <laughs> just a guess. Now, Gina has very famous clients. She has real A-listers. She has people like Goldie Hawn, Cher, Terry Crews, Piers Morgan, <laughs> I'll bring that up because we know about their relationship, Jamie Oliver, just to name a few. Now, as I said, they, she didn't treat her just as an agent. They holidayed together. They lunched together. They became close friends. Now, this is a very common trait with narcissists. What they do is they become your best friend. Whether they're trying to date you, to be friends with you, they want to be business partners with you, they love bomb you. Now, people think love bombing is all to do with affection, but if anything, it's they want to know everything about you. You're sitting there before you know it and you think you're telling this, this person everything because they're so interested in you. They're interested in every detail about your life in ways that you've never been asked if you're okay. Okay. But it's a red flag because what they're actually trying to do is obtain information on you. They've got a little man in their head going, note, note, note. They will use every little bit of detail that you are giving them to, to manipulate you, to twist your brain, to make you believe that they are the best thing since cake. And also, as I found out myself, if you fall out with that person, they will then use every little bit of information to try and destroy you. And it's an absolutely awful thing to go through. So what Megan was doing with Gina, that's why she wasn't just treating her as an agent. She wanted her to trust her, to tell her all of her contacts, where to go, people to be seen with, possibly tricking Gina to give away more information than what she should do being a talent agent. For example, one thing that Gina said in a later interview, she knew that Megan was wonderful. Gina herself is an animal activist. She hates animal cruelty. So Megan said to her that she was going to stay in this hotel, but saw that they had a parrot in a cage in the lobby. So she refused and walked out. Gina was like, I knew she cared about animals then. No, what probably happened was Megan decided she wanted a bigger freebie, didn't like the style of the room, used the parrot as an excuse because it made her look good rather than someone who was being stuck up and wanted a bigger and better freebie. The reason why I say this, any true animal lover and any of you that are dog lovers, especially the families of rescues, cats as well, Megan left her dog Bogart behind. She adopted two dogs. She went to move in with Harry. She left one behind. She separated her two dogs that had bonded and she just discarded it like an old pair of shoes. Sorry, I don't believe anyone that is an animal lover. She said the dog was too old to travel. The dog was six. So no, I do not believe that Megan is an animal lover any more than I believe Harry is an animal lover. I'd like to bring you back to one picture true picture and how about the one with Guy with two broken front legs and Harry for his engagement picture is holding him up by the collar with two broken front legs. Again these are people that I would not trust to have animals.
Now, aside from plugging Gina from everything that she could have in her little black book, she also used Gina to make her into humanitarian. Gina said when she first met Megan, she was so down to earth, so casual, she met her wrapped in a robe, her hair in a towel, in a hotel room with her then boyfriend, Corey Fatello, sitting there, not realizing that he was basically gonna get dumped the moment that she found someone better. Megan had said that she wanted to not be seen as a model, a fashion model, just an actress and a briefcase girl. She wanted, on paper, she wanted the world to see her as a humanitarian, an activist, a true trailblazer for feminist change. Well, she did now have the new political connections and friends. So Gina then started getting Megan gigs. And in 2014 in September, she got UN Women, the He For She gig. Now this is a cause actually supported by Emma Watson, who happened to be someone that Megan fangirled over. She doesn't fangirl over her anymore because there were twice when Megan had tried to meet Emma and Emma had declined. <laughs> now another gig that Gina managed to get Megan in 2014 was seeing troops and their families. Now. Now this one, Megan even goes that step further by putting one of her really, really condescending over the top quotes on her tick page. I have always had such a profound respect for our nation's troops and military families. I cannot thank them enough for everything they do. Tick box, veterans. Know where I'm going with that one? Let's keep going. Tick number two, we then had October 2014, another gig. This one, I believe, is courtesy of her friendship with Jessica Mulroney, who got her in with the Trudeaus. Megan was nominated to become a counsellor for One Young World, and she appeared speaking on a stage with lots of other young women at a conference in Dublin. And whilst I haven't actually listened to Megan's speech on stage, because I'm not really feeling up to a bit of self-flagellation today, it's pretty clearly obvious that Megan is using the exact same expressions as she does where she's possibly more than likely talking about herself. It's the one subject that she is truly and consistently passionate about. Now we go on to 2015 and Suits the ratings had had another little bit of a wobble. There were concerns that they were not going to renew the season again because the ratings had dropped from like 4 million to 2.5 million. So there were concerns. Luckily for everyone, Suits did get renewed. But of course, this I think gave Megan that little shove. I'm going to try coming back over to the UK, despite having a handsome, really, really lovely man back home in Canada who she was living with, with her two dogs. Why let a little thing like a living lover ruin you from trying to find a potentially rich new partner? So time to leave Corey at home and off she went to London. March 2015, paparazzi shots were arranged by Splash News. Photographer Charles Purvey, who took the photos, came forward and says that these were actually arranged by Megan's agents, <laughs> probably Megan herself. And the reason why these really natural looking photographs didn't sell is because no one knew who she was, nobody was interested, and that's why we never saw these photographs until later. March 2015, a night out at the exclusive royal hotspot of Five Hartford Street. Princesses Beatrice, Eugenie, Harry, William, every single one of the younger royals. It is a high-end members club. Meghan attended a screening of Postcard from Istanbul, a film directed by John Malkovich, pictured with the late Julian Sands. So gutted about this actor. They found his body recently. So sad. I loved him in so many films. Um, Room with a View is one of my favourites. Absolutely devastating. Real sad loss for the acting community and for his family. Anyway, moving on before I start getting a little bit... Oh. Now, Megan is photographed here with socialite Amber Nuttall. And as a guess, I would say that this was no doubt a connection through Misha. So again, you've got Megan going to somewhere where she knows the royals like to hang out and a certain ginger royal does has megan already acquired her next target i'm beginning to think so 28th of april 2015 soho house has its big opening party in istanbul megan named <laughs> this makes me laugh right megan is with sophie alex baxter because she was performing there she also was performing with paloma faith who you can see here dancing on tables love paloma Megan didn't even have her name. Megan was the unnamed 
guest. But of course, she quickly latched herself on and was posing for photographs. But yeah, that, that really does make me chuckle. I can imagine that still irks her ego a little bit. So for everyone, Megan was this big A-list Hollywood star. No, she was an unnamed guest. <laughs> But there were lots of stars there, including Eddie Redmayne, and of course, Misha Nunu was there to help keep Megan company. 48 hours of a major networking party. And as I said, that's exactly what Soho House is. Now, Eddie Redmayne, interestingly, most of you know him as an actual A-list, amazing actor, love his work, but he is also an old Etonian and he is chums with Harry and William and is still friends with Prince William. You often see them laughing and joking at any events they appear together. Again, Megan's getting a little bit closer. Not only is Eddie Redmayne a regular at any of the new Soho house openings, so is Princess Eugenie, and so is her partner in crime, it would seem, Cressida. So again, these are all regular faces that you see anytime Soho House has any sort of launch. Now, bearing in mind Istanbul was in 2015, there was another friendship, a short-lived friendship that came up here. Look at this photograph, Istanbul 2015, Meghan Markle with Millie McIntosh. The first story that we heard of Millie was this at Soho Farmhouse in the Cotswolds in 2016. They apparently met there, became friends. Millie was even going to be part of the wedding party, but Harry put his foot down because she was apparently a blabbermouth. Well, she can't be that much of a blabbermouth because she kept her mouth shut that she was hanging around with his then girlfriend as far back as Istanbul 2015. So it makes you wonder, why did Millie keep that quiet? The fact that she had known Megan all the way back then. In fact, a story that has circulated, I'm unsure because without evidence, but isn't it funny that Prince Harry was on a two day tour in Istanbul on the exact same days as the Soho house party? Yes, I'm not saying that Harry went there. He was doing royal engagements during the day with his father, but being a frequenter to Soho house, it's all a little bit, did Meghan and Harry really meet on that blind date or have they crossed paths before? Now, not only is Millie at Istanbul and then Soho House, Millie McIntosh, as I said, she was one of the big stars made in Chelsea. And guess who another big star is? Spencer Matthews. The name's Matthews might ring a bell to some of you because his brother, James Matthews, is married to Pippa Middleton. That is Catherine, Princess of Wales, sister. Yes, again, so we've got another connection. Spencer Matthews knows the Middletons, the same as Mission Nunu's husband and Mission Nunu knew the Middletons as well as William and Harry. That's my little spider. <laughs> Now, in the run-up to the wedding, Millie and Meghan's friendship ended just because Meghan, once she got a ring on her finger, like everyone else, she ghosted Millie. Millie said she wished her well. Apparently, she got nothing but an abrupt message back, which was quite rude from the interpretation that I had. Millie has been polite and not disclosed exactly what was said, but I can imagine it wasn't particularly nice. So basically, once Meghan had exhausted all of Millie's little contacts in her little black book, she was pushed out the door. Bye bye. Now all around this time, Gina is still working her butt off. We are now trying to make Megan not model on boats and yachts and <laughs> do silly little speeches for hair products. No, Megan is now trying to see herself as a, as a serious person out there in the world. No more cheap slutty burger adverts for her. She was now to be seen as a classy lady. And in October 2015, Megan got herself a speaking gig for Dove's self-esteem project, helping young girls reach their full potential in Toronto. In 2015 as well, there was a speech that Meghan gave, I know it's a running theme, isn't it? Meghan giving speeches in cable TV signature luncheon. And we come round to the big one, the big one that everyone knows about, the winner, which must have been for Gina, and that was getting Meghan the 2015 UN Women's Speech. The speech was made out to be a career-defining moment for Meghan, despite the fact part of the speech was actually plagiarised from an Eleanor Roosevelt speech. Meghan said that Banking Moon stood and gave her a standing ovation, and yeah, it all turned out 
that that wasn't quite what happened. If you've read Tom Bauer's book, Revenge, Megan wasn't quite in the main hall. It was like a side gig. And whilst people were applauding, they were applauding in general. So all in all, it was something that happened but didn't quite happen <laughs> the way Megan told it. But, you know, it's her version of the truth. 2016 in Ottawa, Megan is back and she is back with one Young World speech again. She was there for the World Summit and she looks like that she's getting along with all of the other delegates so well. Gina, you can see, actually went with her and Megan reportedly had a little bit of a bust up here or she had a strop. That might be why she's looking so sulky. She wanted to have her pictures with Emma and Justin Trudeau because in the magazine spread, they're all there, but you can't really see see Megan anywhere can you? Megan had her own little page where she was so far away from the other delegates because she's such a girl's girl she might as well have been on the other side of the river. Now in one of the biggest gigs that Gina managed to secure for Megan to help her look like a humanitarian and that was securing Megan as a World Vision Global Ambassador and she went to Rwanda in January 2016. But the problem is whilst Megan was there posing like Princess Diana, playing and mucking around with the children, a lot of the time she was taking photographs of herself while people were taking photographs of her as you do. There are lots of people that complain when these rich celebrities go there and they use children in poverty, white saviour complex, just because Megan's biracial doesn't make it any different. Megan was using the children and the country as a backdrop to make herself look like a humanitarian. And she was doing it all for a perfect reason. Oh yes, the target had definitely been acquired. Look at the way it's all coming together now. We've got veterans. We have got campaigning for women's rights. We've literally got Megan doing a tick box very quickly and here you have the big tick box of South Africa and African children and water and things that Harry genuinely used to care about. Not only that, she posed like his mother in a shot that I will always use. It is creepy as hell. I wonder if she had that photograph in full display for when Harry walked through the door for the first time. She sprayed his mother's favourite perfume and had that just so he walked in and it would trigger some sort of psychological memory. It is really that twisted. And the thing is here as well, the stories have come out that Meghan insisted, bearing in mind it is a charity, so a lot of the cost for travel costs would come out. This isn't Meghan's own money. She demanded basically A-list hotel accommodation. She demanded the top vehicles with aircon. She demanded that she took her own fashion photographer, makeup artist and hairstylist. Oh yeah, apparently that's two hairstylists and a makeup artist that made her look like that. No offence, but you could do that yourself. And she also took her friend, Gabor Jurina. Now he has photographed Megan a lot of times for fashion shoots before. He is a fashion photographer. So it makes it all the more, I don't know, what's the word? Insidious, disgusting. Yes, Megan is exactly the same as all of the other celebrities that go out there and use African children as a backdrop to try and make themselves look better. Megan was also noted for disappearing when she was meant to be helping out and going and playing and having fun with the photographer. Honestly, this is the bit that cracks me up every single time. I don't know how I can say this and not laugh. My life shifts from refugee camps to red carpets. I choose them both because these worlds can in fact coexist and this type of work is what feeds my soul and fuels my purpose. Yes, Megan wrote that on her TIG blog after visiting Rwanda. Firstly, Megan was not really attending red carpet events. As for saying she's going to refugee camps, she went to Rwanda. That's not a refugee camp. She had never been to a refugee camp. In fact, the only time we've seen Megan with refugees has been since she left the royal family and did a quick bit for Netflix where she was too busy staring at the cameraman whilst entertaining children doing heads, shoulders, knees and toes. Now you can see she's quite clearly building up the resume of 
speeches, perfect photographs to show what a kind and wonderful humanitarian she is. Now, in the next beat, which is getting closer to Harry, this is when she meets Violet von Westenholz, who happened to just be dressing Meghan from head to toe in Ralph Lauren when Suits had a big press call in London on the 30th of June 2016. A few days later, Meghan had been given an invite, no doubt by Violet, to join her in the Ralph Lauren private area at Wimbledon. Meghan was already there seeing her friend Serena play. This was on the 4th of July 2016. People have said it was round about the few days that Meghan had just gone on a date with Harry but I think personally that had been going on from some time before. This is a photograph of May 2016 of Meghan incredibly happy and in love. No that's not Harry, that's Corey Vitello, the man that her dogs and she live in with two years together. He thought Thought that he was going to marry her. Again, I say, Corey, I wish you the best of luck. You really did dodge a bullet. So not only is Meghan now in sitting with all of these other socialites in the same social sets, inside basically where Meghan was sitting with her seats, guess who is sitting a few seats over? Not just Dermot O'Leary, not Jenna Coleman, but Cressida, Harry's ex-girlfriend. Now bearing in mind, Meghan, all the Soho house haunts, including the one where she was photographed with Millie McIntosh, when that opened, Opened. Look who was there that was at the grand opening as well, Princess Eugenie and Cressida, because Cressida is pretty much best friends with Eugenie, with Beatrice, with all the same social set. And doesn't Meghan seem to have a vested interest in watching Cressida's every move? Creepy? Yes. Oh, definitely yes. So because Meghan was there to watch her friend Serena play, you know, got to get in those handy tickets, which puts her in with all of these people, look who was there in the box. She had Anna Winter, who I'm sure had absolutely no idea who she was. Serena's mum, who I don't think really enjoyed speaking to Meghan then, nor does she much now either. And then, scarily, you have Pippa Middleton. So there you have it. Meghan has managed to snake her way from a D-list cable TV actress, worked her way in through using social connections, social lights, bumping from one person to the next, to then get herself right into the very fold. It is a small world, and I'd imagine that social set is an even smaller world. Everyone knows everyone. So from knowing Misha and then Alexander, she would know where Harry likes to drink just by plugging little bits of information. The same with Princess Eugenie. We saw them all in a night out, didn't we? For Halloween, we saw Princess Eugenie, Marcus Anderson, we saw Harry, and this is when they all started coming together because, oh, Harry, you know, I've got a friend. Oh, I know this lovely girl, Megan. Oh, yeah, I know met Megan. She's such a lovely girl. It's It's actually terrifying. It is a case of the spider trying to catch the fly. See, as you can see, there's so many different social connections. Marcus Anderson is very high up this pole. I mean, we saw them going out to dinner very recently over in Montecito. People said that that was Eugenie and Jack Brooksbank. It wasn't. It was Eugenie, Marcus Anderson. That was Megan and it was Harry. When Megan recently went for a hike where the paparazzi happened to be there, who was there? Marcus Anderson. Who was in the house when they were showing footage of that house, whether it's theirs or not, in the Netflix documentary series? Marcus Anderson. It is very clear that Marcus is still very good friends with Megan. It's one of those friendships that she's managed to retain. But I think given the number of contacts that they can give each other, it's probably a very mutual beneficial relationship. Given the fact that Omid Scobie was rumoured to have been a fling, don't know how true this is of Marcus Anderson, but we definitely know that Marcus is good friends with Edward Eninful and that might be why Megan managed to score that awful, awful self-aggrandizing Vogue cover, which I'm sure is the shame of Vogue and it will be for years. All I can say about Megan is she knows how to network. She knows how to social climb at such an efficient speed. Think of it like a production line. She's literally sifting through nope can't use you nope can't use you oh you'll do for a bit rubik's cube done you know that's how she goes through people it doesn't matter if you're family friends the moment that you become no use to her anymore you are on that trash pile i see megan honestly as the apex predator of social climbing i find her fascinating to watch it's amazing where she's gone from and where she's got to into in such a close 
space of time really and I honestly I cannot wait to see where she's going to go next and with like any predator we all know what's going to happen to Harry so on that note guys I hope you enjoyed the video it was a super long one to make up for the fact that it was just one video this week and I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and I will be back with normal programming next week take care for now bye